focus on the encounter with God. And today, the Lord loves us. Amen. And that was a song that says, God, you're so good. And the Lord wants the best for us. He wants us to be set free from anything that is entangling us. He wants us to be transferred completely uh, into His kingdom. Because maybe some of us are still struggling spiritually. And uh, the enemy has done you know, some uh, bondage in the lives so uh, you know, of, of anybody. Because right now, the topic that I'm going to share to you, it's a very delicate one. This is entitled From Darkness into Light, From Bandits to Freedom. So we have already been saved, amen. And uh, we have been born again. But I believe some part of uh, some areas of our lives are still not totally surrendered to our Lord Jesus Christ, to our God. So this morning, uh, this is some kind of uh, uh, going deeper into encountering with the Lord, encountering with God. So, I want to read to you First Peter chapter two verse nine, and this is what the the Lord, you know, the word of the Lord says. But you are a chosen generation, chosen people, a royal priesthood. Okay, this is in New King James Version, it says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praise, the praise of Him who called you out of darkness into His wonderful light or marvelous light. The question is, are we walking in the light? As the Bible says, you have been chosen. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that we may declare the praise of Him who called you or who called us out of darkness into His wonderful light. And my question to you this morning is, are we walking in light? So in this uh, topic or in this session, we will deal with getting free from false uh, teachings or false religions or occult involvement that we had in the past or in the present. God has called us out of darkness into His wonderful light. Therefore, we must get free from all lies that we had believed in before and embrace the truth of God's Word. So if we want to embrace the truth of God's word, we want to embrace it all. Let us not just embrace part of it, but we need to embrace all of it. Lies are beliefs, no? lies are beliefs, attitudes or expectations that don't fit reality. Truth is reality. What is real is the truth. Amen. And it is the ultimate truth that gives focus, meaning, and substance of our lives. If you are living in a, in a questionable environment, or we are in the gray area of our lives, I believe there's something wrong with, with our lives. And the Lord wants to, uh, to put us into His holy ground. Amen. That is why today we have been transferred from darkness into light. We have been uh, set free from bondage. Bondage and give, the Lord has given us freedom. The Bible says, He who the Son sets free is free indeed. He who Jesus Christ sets free is free indeed. You know, these are the facts. Number one, Satan's goal is to rob you of your life and neutralize your life through various ways. There are lots of things that the enemy is trying to neutralize us. He wants to neutralize you, your life, or your goal, your, uh, your direction. Number one way of uh, Satan's uh, neutralizing you is 
There are religious deceptions. A lot of religions in the world are trying to deceive people. And uh, they are deceiving the people and people are, because the enemy has blinded their eyes. They cannot see the reality. They are blinded. There are spiritual bandages. And there are diluted fidelity to the Lord Jesus Christ. Every spiritual power that is not of Jesus Christ, or that is not belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, is of the devil. Any spiritual power, anything spiritual that does not belong in the Bible, that does not belong in the Word of God, is of the devil. So we need to, ve uh, to, to verify, to check. The Bible says, you know, test all the spirits. Test. We have to test them. And when they are tested, and when you use the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you use the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you, know, you use the word of God, and if this spirit just cannot stand, you know, in the word of God, he cannot stand in the name of Jesus Christ, he cannot stand in the, in the blood of Jesus, I believe this is not the spirit that comes from God. Remember that Satan appears as an angel of light. Satan's appearance, he can come as an angel of light. Many false prophets now are coming as an angel of truth. As a truth, no? There are a lot of people that are coming. I was attending one church and a lot of prophets, apostles, evangelists coming to the church. And a lot of teaching and teaching and revelations and visions. And some people, they're so amazing the revelations that they, they don't verify it in the Word of God. Satan appear, appearance can be an angel of light. Sometimes we, we, we think you know, about Satan that he is a very, you know, there is a horn, the face is so dark, there is a fan, and there's a fire in the eyes, and it will look at you like the, uh, the eyes is burning, and it has a tail. No, brothers and sisters, Satan can appear also as an angel of light. So don't be deceived. This, there are religious deceptions, there are spiritual bandages, and also all religions or cults and the occults have a certain appeal that can deceive people. People may experience power of healing. They may experience uh, uh, some kind of deliverance. They may experience some kind of uh, 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 victory. But there is always a bandage connected to it. You know, in the Philippines, when we go for crusade, you know, I, when I was in high school and I was working with one evangelist and we went to the mountain to preach the gospel, to, to have this crusade. And it was, uh, I witnessed how we invited people that they have what they call this amulet. You know, they have the amulet. Because in the Philippines, if you have an amulet, they call it anting anting. When you when you have this amulet in your in your pocket or in your in your waist, you can you can you will not be you will not be uh, killed by a gun. So when we went there in the in, in the mountains and invite people to surrender all their amulets, and you know what would happen? To happen? They they surrendered and all these amulets are burning. You know? It is it, the oil inside is uh, is bubbling and burning, and it's boiling. No, because it doesn't come from, from, uh, from, from God. And what happened? The first time that they experience it, when they, are, uh, when they have the encounter with the enemy, it is true, they did not die. The body did not penetrate their bodies. Because there is some kind of power. But the third time they died. So that is the lie of the enemy. So, and because of that bondage, all the people, they cannot uh, know the truth. They will not be able to, uh, to stand in the truth. Why? Because there's some bandits in their lives. So let's just go on. God wants the best for you. 
God wants the best for us. He wants everything in us. Best. He does not want you to be robbed by Satan. God does not want us to be robbed by the enemy. No, and it is, uh, it is uh, the responsibility of, of the Lord to protect His people. And secondly, God is also very jealous with your devotion. Now, God is jealous with your devotions. So He commands total avoidance of all spiritual influences. You have to avoid all types of spiritual influences. We can read it in Psalms 81, verse 9. I will tell you, right now I am making you ready for this, uh, some kind of uh, uh, deliverance from all these things. Psalms 91, uh, 81, verse 9, it says, There shall be no foreign God among you, nor shall you worship any foreign God. So there shall not be any foreign God among you. Because the Lord is a jealous God. And His commandments is He want total devotion to Him. He does not want partial devotion. God does not want half of your devotion. He want total devotion from all of us. And in Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10 to 12, it says that, Let no one be found among you who practices divination, or sorcery or interpret omens engages in witchcraft or cast spells or who is a medium or spiritist who console the dead anyone who does this thing is detestable to the lord so this thing that i'm telling you today these are the things that practiced by the pagan the pagan nations but some of us Maybe some of you, some of us, have encountered this type of practices in your lives. Not only in you, but also in your family. And there are bandages, there are strongholds that these things have already penetrated to your family. That is why we need to remove it, we need to cast it out. We need to be delivered from all these things. Again, practices divination or sorcery. Interpret omens. Engages in witchcraft or casting spells. Who is, uh, who is also a medium or spiritist. Who consult the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable or against the Lord. Against the commandment of the Lord. Because you know what? Satan wants to divide your devotion and trust. No, the, the, the weapon of Satan, the enemy, he wants to divide your devotion and your trust. Some people, they cannot, you know, they cannot concentrate on serving the Lord because the devotion is divided. And when your devotion is divided, you are confused. Amen. You are confused. When your devotion is divided, you are confused. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to choose. And that is the one that Satan is doing in our lives. You know, even in the church, sometimes our devotion is confused. For example, you are a leader. You are involved with the music team. You are involved with the ministry. And every Friday, you think that tomorrow, no, during Thursday night, you're thinking only that tomorrow I'm going to church. Because I am a member of the music team, I will go there because I need to, uh, to practice. If I am a musician, musician I, will, I will practice the, the songs. I will practice, I will practice, I will prepare the stage, I will prepare the everything. And you know what? Your devotion already focuses on the activity. You already focus yourself on your activity. The tomorrow, this is the one. Number one, this is the I'm to do. Number two, but you forgot your first love. You forgot that you are going to the church 
because you want to, to worship God in spirit and in truth. You are becoming like Martha. You are focused on the activity. You are focusing on everything, you know. Sometimes a pastor is like that. The pastor, he want to, uh, to, to check everything in place. He want uh, everything in order. But I thank the Lord because every day, every Friday, and every, uh, uh, most of, of the time every Friday, the Lord is reminding me, when I wake up, do not confuse yourself, but focus on God. Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why when I come to the church, I always, I always smile. Because I know that my will, that the will of the Father is for me to glorify Him. This morning at 5 a.m., we wake up and went to the Don't Watch. And we have uh, spent our time with the, with the brothers from the body of Christ. And I was so happy. Don't Watch. So we, we wake up. You know, it's, it's a very uh, uh, challenges, you know, it's a bit challenging to you to wake up. Especially when you are already with your sleep, uh, you know, sleep late. You sleep around 1 a.m. and you have to wake up at 5 a.m. It's, it's a challenge for you. But when the alarm clock will ring, you have to wake up. Because my devotion is to go to the dome watch this morning. And then you go to the church. You prepare yourself. Because your devotion, you want to give totally to the Lord. Because Satan, what he's doing is, you want to divide your devotion. Many times, your gadgets, you know, your account in the Facebook, everything, even your relationship, it may divide the devotion. You cannot go to the prayer meeting because you are with your girlfriend. You spend time with your friend, you spend with, you, with, with, your, with the people, and then you don't go to the prayer meeting. So this is the thing. The devotion that we are uh, giving to the Lord is only half. Partial devotion. That is a tool that Satan is using for us as Christians. If he cannot make us to sin, you know, if he cannot make us to conf uh, to confirm, uh, to conform to, to to committing sin, if he cannot force us to do something bad. Because we are, we are already a grown Christian, matured already, and we know that, ah, this is sin. If I do this, is, this is sin. I know this is sin. But you don't know that while you are serving God, He is dividing your devotion little by little, eventually. You focus so much in the ministry. You focus so much on, on the how to do the work in the ministry. But we forget our first love. We forget that, first of all, I need to pray. First of all, I need to, to bow down. I need to be in my knees and pray. And I will ask the Lord, Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lord, for giving me another life today, Lord. Thank you for the new day. Thank you for the new life. We forget. Because we focus most of the time in the big things. When we say that we are doing big things, then God is glorified. Yes, God is glorified. But first of all, we need to come into our hearts. We need to realize again that yes, I need to return to the first love. I need to return to my first love. My first love is God. Aside from anyone, anything in this world, God must be our priority. The number one priority of our lives. Let's go on. God considers any divided allegiance as spiritual adultery. This is very strong. God considers any divided allegiance as spiritual adultery. Are you with me? Yeah. I will repeat. God considers any 
divided allegiance as spiritual adultery. If you give your allegiance to God, He requires total allegiance. It is the same when we put our allegiance to our country. When we sing the national anthem, we give full and total allegiance. Because you are, you know, under your country. In Japan, when you sing, when you, when you, when you sing the national anthem, everyone will stand and everyone will put their hands into their breast and you will sing the song because it shows that they, their allegiance is to their country. In the Philippines also, in the cinema, when the, when the national anthem is being played, all the people will stand at their feet, they will put their hands in their breast and they will sing the songs because they have total allegiance to their country. I believe also in Nigeria, in Pakistan, when your national anthem is being played, no one is uh, chanting, no one is doing a crazy thing. Because anybody can call a police and report you that you are disrespecting your country. In the same way, brothers and sisters, when we put our allegiance to God, when we put our, our uh, commitment to God, when the Lord is in your, you know, when the Lord is in front of you and He will require you a full allegiance to Him, you have to stand straight, put your hands in your breast and give Him full allegiance. The same as what you are doing to your country, the same as what you are doing to your, uh, even to your company. Even in your company, you have to give your total allegiance. You cannot work in this company and work in another company and you cannot disclose the company, company's profile to another company because you need to put your commitment into this company. Amen. We need to put your total allegiance. That is why the Lord considers a divided allegiance, divided heart or a divided commitment the same as spiritual adultery and it's very strong. There's one thing that they call doubling or playing around. Playing around with the Lord is a very serious and very damaging to you. You play with you, you, you give your allegiance to God, and after that you go and play with another God. And you play with another another uh, thing, and you play with another thing, and then you are playing around. This is very dangerous to your Christian life. Give your total commitment to God. Give your total obedience to God. Give your total allegiance to God. Not even small matters. You know, when I was in elementary, no, in high school, we have, I have participated in what we call uh, spirit of the glass. No, because this spirit of the glass is uh, it's like, uh, you know, this is serious. But we have participated, we put glass and we, uh, we, have, we put in a circle and we, we, <laughs> when we are waiting what, the, what the will happen and then we sing the spirit of the glass then this is not to be done by Christians also. Small matters that we do, we have done already for fun, even for fun is not allowed or delus delusions of trust in Christ. Sometimes we people, I saw many of you, you are putting horoscope in your Facebook. <laughs> this is my horoscope. I am Virgo. This is my characteristic. This is my nature. Horoscope is not of the Lord. And we have to avoid using that one. This is Greek, you know, Greek mythology. And if, if you have, you know, ah, this is just for fun, Pastor. This is for fun because maybe in the horoscope we say that uh, you will be, a, uh, you will be very beautiful. 
In 2019, you'll be, you'll be, uh, you'll become, uh, you know, something like this, something like that. This is just for fun. But I tell you that those small matters are still detestable to the Lord. And it's not acceptable. Jesus offers total freedom from those spiritual bandages of our lives. So what are those spiritual bandages? There are a lot of them. I will tell you one by one later on. So to be set free from every bandage or spiritual bandages in our lives, we must know by heart that number one, Christ, we are in Christ and the priesthood of the believers. We read it already. We are a holy nation. We are a member of the royal priesthood. That's what we are as believers in Christ. Secondly, our position in Christ. We are seated with Him in the heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers. Above all thrones and dominions. We are seated far above all of them. And we have the power and dominion and authority in the name of Christ. That is what who we are. So we have to know all these things. That these things that have, we have done or just we are doing, still we are doing, those things are detestable before the Lord. And the Lord, He wants us to be set free from all these things. We need to know our priesthood. We need to know who we are in Christ. Our position in Christ. That we are seated above in heavenly places. Far above principalities. And far above any powers and dominion of this world. Far above any throne or any kingdom. Spiritual kingdoms of this world we are already seated far above anything else in this world and we have the power and authority that comes in the name of Jesus Amen now what is our powerful weapon our powerful weapon is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 to 5 let us read this verse. I would like you to, to be reminded again that we have our powerful weapon as believers. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in that we're pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God. So in the name of Jesus, in Mark 16, 17, the name of Jesus is the name above every name. Mark chapter 16, verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. This sign, signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. So how we will cast out demons? How we will cast out spiritual wickedness? In the name of Jesus. Because Jesus' name is the name above every name. His name is above all principalities and dominion and powers and throne down in this world. He is far above. His name is Jesus. Amen. Secondly, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. His victory won at Calvary. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. I would like to read it also. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love the lives to the death. Who are they? These are the believers. 
those faithful believers that they overcome him. Who is him? Small him. It is Satan. They overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus Christ was the Lamb that was offered for our sins. And his blood flew, no? flowed at the cross. Shed at the cross. And because of his blood, we have overcome the world. We have overcome the enemy. If something is bothering you, if some uh, evil spirit is bothering you, if you cannot sleep because of some dreams or some uh, uh, disturbance from the evil spirit, you have to cast it in the name of Jesus, in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why last night I prayed that, Lord, cover me with your precious blood. Because today I want to attack the enemy. Today I will, I will, I will let the people of God be set free. And I believe the enemy is right now is very angry. Why? Because he don't want any one of us to be set free. He don't want these people to be removed from the bandages of their lives. He did. He didn't. He did not allow people to be uh, to be uh, to be set free from the strongholds that they were entangled with. You know, Satan. He will put some stronghold in your life. He will put some error in your life that he will operate. Evil spirit will operate in that simple place in your life. And he will start operating until he will put, you know, a stronghold in you, in us. And he will drag you. And he will drag you. And he will bring you. You know, and even you want to fly, you want to soar in your ministry, you want to fly, you know, in your, in your, in, your, in, in everything. You want to do anything for the Lord, but you are not going anyway. You know, because of the chain that is entangling you. That is the Lord. He wants us to be broken. The, the bandages to be broken, to break every chain that is entangling us. That is that is why the enemy is right now. Maybe he's in panic. The people will, they will be set free. And he will be attacking us. How to be protected? Only by the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed at the cross. If anyone, anything is happening that is not uh, that is norm, that is not normal. If you are dreaming all the time, some bad images, some bad things is happening, you pray, you rebuke in the name of Jesus. And you have to lay, to kneel down and Lord, Lord, I pray that you remove this thing from me in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray right now that you cover me with your precious blood. Cover my family with your precious blood. Cover my mother, cover my father, cover my brothers, my sisters in the name of Jesus. And cover everything I love in the name of Jesus. Then the enemy cannot, cannot go beyond the blood of Jesus. He cannot step beyond the blood of Jesus. He cannot penetrate beyond the blood of Jesus Christ. Because the blood of Jesus is a very powerful. It will protect you from any attack of the enemy. You know, the enemy is always ready to put the fiery darts, you know, there are darts, he will throw darts at you, every time, especially when you are a pastor, especially when you are, when you are so faithful in the Lord, especially when you are, you, when you are so close to the Lord, he will put a lot of darts, fiery darts in you, and when you are unprotected, and that time you are not protected, what will happen? The, the darts will hit you and the enemy will put a stronghold in you and he will drag you slowly, slowly and then later on you don't want to pray, you don't want to praise God, you don't want to sing the songs for, for, for God and you don't want to go to the church already. Why? Because the enemy has put already a stronghold in your life and the Lord who wants to be, you to be separate today. Number three, the truth of the word of God. To overcome temptation and to shatter the lies of the evil one, 
the evil one, we need the truth in the word of God. Every action that we need to do as a minister, as a leader, as a believer, as a child of God, every action that we need to do, we need to base it in the word of God. Especially those very delicate ones. We need to be bounded in the word of God. Because without the word of God, we have no foundation. The word of God is our foundation. The word of God is our covering against any lies of the enemies. And number four, our weapon, number one, our weapon in the name of Jesus. Number two, the blood of Jesus. Number three, the truth of the word of God. And number four, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We have the word of knowledge, we have the discerning of spirits, we have faith, we have healing. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. I will read to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. And this is the word of God. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kind of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, when you can interpret dreams and visions, be sure. I told the brothers and sisters, the pastors, our pastors in the UCF, I told them that it is not bad to have visions. It is not against the Word of God. Because the Word of God can communicate to us through His Word, through circumstances, through uh, various happenings. And also, He can communicate to us through dreams and visions. But we need to be careful. Because the enemy also can, can put some images in our minds. And we have to, to ask the Lord for wisdom. And we ask the Lord, Lord, is this for you? Is that for you? Or not? We have to test if the spirits. And then if we confirm that this is from the Lord, not from someone else, from the Lord. If it is, if it is a revelation, it is from the Lord. Do not listen to anyone who is telling you, ah, this guy, this man, is like, no, that is, that is, that's it. That is not revelation. So if you need revelation, ask the Lord. Lord, what to do? Dreams and visions will occur during deep sleep. If you are not dreaming, you are not dreaming well while you are awake. Revelation will come, dreams will come during sleeping. So when you dream, check if the dream is continually coming back again and again. The Lord is telling you someone, something else. But 95% of our dreams, we forget. Right? Every time I dream, I dream also. I dream I'm flying. I am, I'm becoming a superhero. I'm becoming a superman. I can fly. I, I saw the people down. But it's not true. That's only my imagination. Sometimes I dream I'm running, but I cannot run fast. And something else is behind me. And I cannot run very fast. But then I was young. So I was, when I awake, I'm so afraid. So, but some dreams are really coming from the Lord. Just like Abraham. He was in deep sleep. And the Lord spoke to him in deep sleep. And visions also, it will occur between when you are sleeping and when you are waking up. When you're about to sleep and when you're about to wake up, in between, the, the vision will come to you. But when you are praying to the Lord, when you're praying, when you're singing songs and when you are awake, when something come to your mind or come to your directly, that is impression. The Lord just impressed to you that this is what I want you to know. So we need to, to balance the things. Amen. Just like Brother Daniel today, Pastor Daniel. I told him, if you have the revelation or you have impression from the Lord, right there, stand and tell the people that this is what the Lord wants us to do. 
So today he's there. And he wants us to sing again, I will sing. Because this is the impression of God in his heart. This is the ministry that we are going, that we are doing. Do not be afraid that the pastor might not believe you. No. If this is coming from the Lord, there is power. Amen. Amen. There is power. When it comes from the Lord, there will be anointing. There will be power that when you begin to open your mouth, people will feel. Because we have discerning spirits. Amen. But if you are planning only, I will make this one. After this one, I will make. That is you. That there's no power. And people will discern it also. So, as believers, we have gifts. And we need to use the gifts for the edification of the church. To edify, to encourage, to edify, to correct, to rebuke. But most of the time is to edify the church. Gifts are for the edification of the church. Yes, we can speak in tongues. But if you are speaking in tongues and you don't know how to interpret your tongue, don't speak. If you speak in tongues, somebody should interpret. Why? For the church to understand and they will be edified. They will be encouraged by the prophecy that you are telling. Amen. So kids, we need to use this weapon against the enemy. Amen. Praise the Lord. First, from darkness into light. Secondly, I would like to go further go deeper and I call it from bondage to freedom we already dealt with the uh, with your past with some uh, occult involvement with uh, some horoscope involvement some of the uh, you know some of the things that we have done before if you have done such things as that which is detestable to the Lord which is against the commandments of the Lord we have to pray right now that the Lord will break it amen but I, will, I am preparing you today. I am preparing everyone that later on we have to pray that once again, once and for all, the Lord will deal with all these things in our lives. Then once again we can see, Lord, I am set free. I am set free already. And I can fly, I can soar like eagle. I can do the ministry now. I am not afraid. I am no longer a slave of anything or anyone. Because I am set free by the blood of Jesus. Number two. We have, we have one, two only. Number one is from darkness into light. And number two is from bondage to freedom. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. Last of the flesh is not only speaking about sexual immorality. Last of the eyes, last of the flesh, and the pride of life. These are the things that the Lord wants to destroy in our lives. Today, in this, in this lesson, we will be dealing with personal sins. I don't know what you are doing when you're alone at your room. I don't know what you are doing when you're alone in, your, in, a, in a secluded place. But there are things that we have done that is trying to put us down and we are not being able to soar in our ministry. So today, let's deal about this. This covers destructive attitudes, destructive habits, this is also idolatry and addictions and dependencies. So we will identify these things. So even if we are already born again, we are spirit-filled believers, we can still have problems with some besetting sins in our lives. Me, I accept. I have problems also. Sometimes I have that heart, you know, heart of anger. Sometimes I commit you know, I am angry. Why? If you have some expectation that you want to meet in a certain level and it requires other people to do it for you to be satisfied and you fail to do it, then you are angry. 
I have that anger. I have, uh, you know, things like that. But we need to identify these destructive attitudes, destructive habits, idolatry, what kinds of idolatry we are involved with, and do we have addictions and dependencies? So even if you are a Christian, sins that seems to keep us bound without victory, even if we earnestly decide to overcome them, but we don't have victory because the sins are in us and is entangling us. I tell you today that Jesus died not only to forgive you for, from your sins, but also to set you free from everything that keeps us bound. He did not just save you from hell. Because if you are an unbeliever, your, your destination is hell. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, He did not only save you from fire, from hell, but also He wants you to be set free from all kinds of things that is bounding you. That is the that's why I told you that God loves you. God loves us. And God is so good. He wants His people to live a victorious life. It is that His will that we live a defeated life. There are things that we see that they are signs of strongholds of the enemy in our lives. I told you already that Jesus died not only to forgive your sins, but also to set you free from everything that keeps you bound. You know, many times there are cycles. We are living in cycles. Sins that is coming back and repeated again and again. And we know that we are enslaved to it. We want to overcome it, but we cannot overcome because we are enslaved. The Bible says if you are a slave, you have to obey because you are a slave. If you are a slave of sin, then you have to obey that sin all the time. No struggle. You have to obey. Why? Because you are a slave. You have not been set free. Unless this visiting sins be dealt with, this will not be removed automatically. We need to be delivered from them in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, by His Word, and through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that is the will of God in our lives. I will give to you some destructive attitudes today some of them may be, we, we have it, maybe some of them are not with you, but I will tell you these things. These are the things that involves our emotions. These are destructive attitudes. These attitudes are present in our lives. I will not point fingers, but as I mention these things, reflect to yourself. Meditate and tell the Lord, is this thing present in my life? Number one, jealousy. Are you jealous? Yes. Are you in fear of anyone or anything or anybody? <laughs> Number two, self-pity. Some people, they feel pity in their lives, of themselves. The Lord wants to speak to us this morning. You have jealousy? Are you self-pity? Do you have the self-pity in your life? Second, thirdly, do you have this attitude that you want to please people? Even if you compromise the word of God, but you want to please people. They call it people pleasing. You have this hatred in your heart. If you have unforgiveness and grudges, if you are coming to another church and you come to UCL and you did not talk to the pastor of the church 
where you came from. And the pastor feel something is hurt because you left the church without telling him that is there is an unforgiveness. There is, there is a grudge. So you need to go to him and tell him, Pastor, I'm sorry. Today, I need you to release, to release me. If not today, go to the church. If you are, if you are attending another church before, and tell the pastor, Pastor, forgive me. I left the church without informing you. I have some, you know, I felt something in my heart. That's why I left the church. Today, forgive me. Vengeance. Do you have the attitude of vengeance? If somebody do some bad thing to you, you want to, you know, to make vengeance. Do you have anger? Uncontrolled anger. You are angry of small things, you are angry of big things. You are easily anger. Your temperance is so high. One word is enough for you to slap another pe another person. That is anger. Next is argumentativeness. Too much arguments. Too much. You know yourself. When the best. When somebody will tell any suggestion, a lot of arguments. There is commotion all the time. That's the word. That's the word. Covetousness. Bitterness. Are you bitter with your friend? If you broke up with your ex, are you still bitter? You have to release it. If not, it will be a stronghold in your life. Rejection. This feeling of rejection, not accepted. Some people, they felt rejected. Especially when they are... That's why they go in a solitude place. They, put, they go away from people because they felt this rejection. Self-condemnation. Do you condemn yourself? The Lord has already said, therefore now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But we condemn ourselves. When we commit some bad things, we condemn. I cannot face God anymore. Self-condemnation. Do not condemn yourself. Worry also is an attitude. Every time you worry, no rice, you worry. No food, you worry. No money, you worry. No press, no problem. Too much worry. Too much worry. And your, your wrinkles are too much already because of worry. The Lord says, even the birds in the sky, they don't work. And yet, I feed them. See the grass in the field. They don't toil. And yet, they are alive. How much more for you, my children? Why worry? You cannot act. You can never act any grain that you're here. I'm looking to with the brother Daniel. No grain. You can attack. Why worry? The Lord is speaking to us right now. If these things are present in our lives. Second, next is pride. Do we have pride? All of us we have pride. Ego. When your pride is being torn down, we we react. When the person said to you one pride, you give them five prides, five reactions. Fear. Fear is also a sin. If you are fear, fearful, worry is sin, doubt is sin, fearful is sin also. If you are fearful of everything, I don't want to go, I don't want to, I'm fearful. No. You know what? Jesus Christ, every time, he came to his disciple. What he's saying? Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. I am. I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he doesn't want us to be painful. That is why when he saved us, you know, when the Lord Jesus Christ saved us, he did everything. Why? For you to have the feeling of 
satisfaction of contentment. In the Old Testament, people are so careful. Why? They have to do everything before they will be accepted by God. They have to follow the Ten Commandments. They have to follow the, all the commandments. Judicial commandments, sacrificial commandments, all these commandments they have to follow. Or else. But in the New Testament, in the blood of Jesus Christ, He gives you salvation as a gift. When you receive it, you will receive it fully. That is why in your Christian life, no need to be fearful. Why? Because your salvation is final. It will give you peace of mind and your heart will be joyful. Why? Because anything, anyone, nobody, nothing in this world can remove you from the hands of God. Whatever thing it is, He will always hold on to you. Not you holding to God that every time you go, you go. But no, God is holding on you and He will not let you go. So don't be afraid. Next, greed. Some people are so greedy. Do you want this? Do you want this? When you give them your hand, you will take your arms. <laughs> Greedy. So this destructive attitudes, we have to confess with the Lord today. Also, perfectionism. Perfectionism. There's an attitude of perfectionism. Some mistake, I can't stand with mistake. No, be gracious. Perfectionism is not good. I believe mean, God is perfect. God, but we are not. So when we when people fail, we have to accept them. Because you know when, when God, when we fail, God accepts us. When we fail, 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 God is accepting us. When we come to Him and confess to Him, Lord, I failed today. And don't be tired of confessing because God will always accept you. Accept you. Next, unbelief. Too much unbelief. We don't believe. Even it's written in the Word of God, we don't believe. Some of the, one of the very uh, serious unbelief, you know, the giving. <laughs> in Malachi 3, 10, God said, test me in this. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And yet we are, don't, we don't believe. That is why you don't give. And that's when the blessing of God is flowing in our lives. That's unbelief. If you have the belief and you have the faith, give what is due to the Lord and the Lord will reward you. Amen. That is the sign that you believe. And lastly, for the destructive attitudes, we have this resentment. What is the meaning of resentment? It is like also with the bitterness. The same with bitterness. Resentment. You said yes, but in your heart, no. I agree. But in your heart, you don't agree. And when people do it, then you start doing, you know, uh, having a distance with them. And then you tell them later, later on, I, I quit. Why? I don't like it. I did not like it. But you have to be honest in yourself. When you have resentment, confess it. Pastor, I don't like it. Pastor, I want, I want this one, I want this one. And then when everybody agree, then you have to submit. Amen? And no resentment. If this is what we agreed, and we have already agreed as a church, then we have to do it with, with, with full you know, obedience in our hearts, without resentment. So those are the destructive attitudes. Jealousy, self-pity, people pleasing, envy, hatred, unforgiveness and grudges, vengeance, anger, argumentativeness, covetousness, bitterness, rejection, self-condemnation, worry, pride, fear, greed, perfectionism, unbelief, and resentment. Now we will go to destructive habits and actions. Number one, gossip. Amen. Telling lies to another people. But telling truth to another people. But it also gossip. You know, when, when there is truth, and you tell this truth to other people, you know, and it, it destroy some, some, some other people. For example, I'm telling you like, like white lies. 
There are truths that sometimes it, it comes with the white lies. But all these things are still wrong. It's still lies. Secondly, hurtful speech. Hurtful speech. Tactless. Not thinking what saying. Always talking. <laughs> and do not think. And people are, are hurt. Third is dirty language. Your language is dirty. All the kinds of uh, PI and <laughs> all these things. You know, people are speaking curses. They curse their mother, they curse their father, they curse everyone. Those are destructive habits and actions. Also cursing. Is, is there anybody in your life that you have cursed? That you said to them, mamatay ka na sana, or you have to die, you have to ganito sana mayayari, so magkasakit ka sana. That is also a curse. There is power in the word. Even as a joke, don't, don't say it. Huwag mong sabihin, sana, hindi ka makapagkasawa. Kawa ba naman yun? Tapos, ang sinabihan mo, 46 years old na. So, oh, naman siya. So, cursing is part of destructive habits and actions. And also stealing. Stealing other people's belongings. Stealing from your company. Sometimes, I ask the Lord, Lord, forgive me. Bless my company. <laughs> Sometimes, I'm printing a program for the church in the company. So, that's why I thank the Lord because God provided our, print, our own printer. And He used... <laughs> One of our sisters. Now, when you're using the company's, you know, company's materials, that is a stealing. Yes. Don't use them. You use the printer, you use the, you use the computer to, uh, to, to do some other businesses. You use the company car for <laughs> driving and getting people in the road and making money. That is wrong. You're using company's property. That is a stealing. Breaking promises. Who did a lot of this? Raise your hands. Breaking promises. Oh, na ako. We have a lot of promises. Broken promises. In order to avoid breaking a promise, do not make any promise. The problem is, say it to you. Totoo? Totoo? But promise ko muna. But promise. Promise na lang. But, you know, when you break your promises, you'll break the heart of the one you, you whom you have promised. Right? Because he already, or he already expected. Amen. For example, your child. Tell your child, today is Friday. On Sunday, we will eat ice cream. Right? Then this child already, hmm, ice cream. You're already tasting the, you know, the, the, the taste, imagining that he's eat, she's eating ice cream. And then on, on Sunday, you're late going home, coming home, and the child is waiting on you in the sofa or outside and waiting, Daddy or Mommy, where is the ice cream? I don't we'll bring ice cream, I'm sorry. Then she will cry. We will break other people's heart because of broken promises. And if you don't do, don't promise. That's why now I, I made a promise to myself. <laughs> Not to make many promises. Only little. Little promises, little to be broken. <laughs> then the last thing. That, no, that's the third, fourth to the last. Destructive habits and actions. Maybe some of us already have uh, experienced doing this don't be hurt because the Lord want to restore you the Lord want to remove that you know that uh, spirit of uh, condemnation into your life the second is abortion murder I'm not pointing any finger at you or anybody or anyone or anybody but if you have done this thing the Lord right on speaking to your heart that he can forgive you. He can set you free from that action.
or a bunch of done. It's already done. Finished. You cannot return it. You cannot make it alive again. And if you have done it, ask the Lord, Lord, forgive me and set me free from all these things that I have done, especially those things that we call abortion or murder. Because it's already a life and you abort it. So it's a sin before the Lord. Also, when you are thinking to commit suicide, when you are thinking, when you are having also death, you know, wishes, that is very wrong. When you are in big problem, when you have big troubles in your life, when you are, when you are doing, no, when you are, when you are in the financial, you know, problems, you are saying to yourself, mas mabuti pa mamatay na lang ako. Lord, take me. Some people are thinking about suicide. Some Christians also. Not only unbelievers, but also Christians. You know, when they are out of their mind, when they are, uh, when they, when the problem is too big for them. But I tell you, there's no bigger problem than our God. Amen. When you see your problem as a mountain, you will see God small. But when you see God as a mountain, you will see your problem small. He can solve every problem. So don't commit suicide. Sabi nila, gusto ko mag-suicide sa punuan ng kamatis. Bali-balin yun. That is also a death, you know, death wish. And then, last. Last food. Last of the eyes. Last of the flesh. I will tell you, last is for everyone. Not only for men, but also for women. Not also for single men or single women, but also for many couples. Amen. You are with your wife, you love your wife, you have your children with you, but your eyes is looking to that lady and you are lusting before yeah. that lady. Hallelujah. It's the same. <laughs> then when you look your wife, she's no longer attractive. <laughs> and you look around, too much attractive women. She's younger than the wife. And you're committing lustful in your eyes. The Bible says, if you see a woman with lust, you are committing adultery. In the same, you are with your wife, you have your children, you are happy with them, playing in the park. Then when you see a woman walking with a skirt, then you lust with her, what it means? You commit adultery. Adultery in your life, in your, in your eyes. You did not jump with her, but in your eyes, in your heart, you have committed adultery. So we have to confess it before the Lord. And lastly, lying. You always lie. I also lie. You lie. My friend, I have a friend, you know, I was waiting with him in my car because we went to play basketball. And he's, I saw his home another, in another side of the road. And he said to, uh, I told him, where are you? I'm already down in front of my of my building. So I was there in front of the building and he was up there. <laughs> He's lying. So sometimes we do that. But sometimes I call, you know, I, we're calling some brothers or sisters. Sister, where are you? Pastor, I'm busy. But you're at home, you're sleeping. You're watching movie. <laughs> Pastor, we need to, to go to church. We need to like this. Pastor, I have to do something. Pastor, I'm, I have a dog. The Lord will kill your dog. Pastor, I'm busy with this, I'm busy with that. All the time you're lying. And the Lord don't want it. Even white lies. White lies are not acceptable. Why? They are still lies. Amen. So today, church, I have two things more to 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 discuss with you. So we have already discussed about destructive attitudes, we have destructive habits and actions. Those habits include gossip, hurtful speech, dirty language, cursing, stealing, breaking promises, abortion, did wish or suicide, lust and lying. Then we'll go to the next, idolatry. Idolatry is blind or excessive devotion to something. That is idolatry. Idolatry is putting something in place of God. Looking to it for fulfillment rather than God. That is idolatry. 
looking something in the in place of God and looking to it for fulfillment rather than God. Idol is anything we value more than God. You can idolize a person. You can idolize you can idolize a thing or a time. So anything we have idolized. Number one, materialism or wealth. Number one is wealth. We need we need this, we need this, we need this. Secondly, possession, things. We idolize our husband, we idolize our girlfriend, we idolize people. We, we have a particular lifestyle. We, I need to carry this kind of lifestyle. I need this kind of hobbies. My hobby, what is my hobby? Playing golf. Very expensive. <laughs> hobbies, ambitions, we have a lot of ambitions. Sometimes you don't go to church because I need, I need to, to fulfill my ambitions. Sometimes we don't, we don't uh, serve God because we have an ambition for our family. But these are idols in our lives. We have professions or career. Career, your career is your idol. Also we have idol worship to whom we are dedicated to. We have the name of idols we serve or bow down. Some people, I, I believe some of you, you have bowed down to many idols already. Especially when you are in the in the in the past, your past religion, you have uh, bowed down to the Black Nazarene, you have bowed down to Santo Nino, you have bowed down to Buddha, you have bowed down to any any graven images, and these are idols. The Bible says, "Thou shalt not make no other gods before me." Any graven graven images, those are idols. And also ceremonials and rituals made. There are rituals. You participate in rituals, ceremonials, enchantment, enchantations. Those are the things that we need to discover about idolatry. Lastly, I will talk about addiction or dependencies. Addiction, what are the addictions? Things that we do more than we need. Addicted to food. That's gluttony. That's also sin. Addicted to nicotine, cigarette. That is also a sin. Addicted to drugs, drug addiction, mind-altering drugs, shabu, cocaine, all kinds of drugs. Addicted to alcohol. Addicted to gambling. Addicted to uh, addicted to computer games or online games, and many other things that we are addicted. So today, church, I request everyone to please stand. I would like to request our musicians to please come and play some songs. Today, I believe the Lord wants to set us free. Amen. Amen. You heard it, and you are aware of the things that the Lord commands and what He don't like. That is against His will. Today, we will make a joint prayer of submission, a joint prayer of deliverance, a joint prayer of surrender. I would like everyone to raise your hands. Raise your hands before the Lord. After this prayer, I will assure you that we will have spiritual freedom. We will declare that all these things Detestable before the Lord. Destructive habits, destructive actions, destructive things that we have done in our lives, even our devotion to other gods, our we bow down to any other graven images, all these things the Lord wants to remove it from us right now. And any area of our life. Is there anything that the Lord doesn't want? We need to surrender it right now. And anything in our life, any part of our life that the enemy is operating, we will cast them down and remove it once and for all. And after this prayer, I declare and I give to the Lord everything, all the glory and the honor, because we will be set free indeed. Amen. I would like everyone to close your eyes. And follow me with a simple prayer, a prayer of submission, prayer of surrender. 
that we will, that we will declare today that we will be set free from all these things. Heavenly Father, you have called me to clothe myself with Christ and not to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Forgive me for all the sins that I have done. Right now, in your mind, say to the Lord all the things that you want to say to Him. All the sins that you want to confess to the Lord. Anything, any sin that you will remember that I have given to you. Say it before the Lord. Mention that specific sin right now. God, I now choose to turn from all these destructive habits, destructive actions, and destructive attitudes. I choose to turn from all the detestable things that I experienced before. If I have bowed down to any graven images, if I have idolized anything against you, I choose to turn from them, Lord. And now I rely on you only. I choose to walk in obedience to your word and your spirit through the power of Jesus through the name of Jesus through the shed blood of Jesus I claim your total freedom I declare that I am already set free for in Jesus name I pray Amen and Amen Praise the Lord Let us pray Father in the name of Jesus You see the hearts of your people You see Lord God what they have experienced in their lives Right now Father God Receive all of them Receive them to your kingdom of God Transfer them Lord God Finally from darkness into light and allow your people Lord God to walk in the light. And Lord, set them free from every bondage. And set them free Lord God from anything, every chain Lord God is destroyed. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.